we have Tim's bike here, which uh, is just amazing. I'm, I'm just blown away that they uh, that they drove it in uh, the other day, and uh, it's uh, had a lot of eyes on it. And one of the nice things about it is the the reflective uh, metal surfaces on there, and we can go in in uh, Lightwave and work with all the attributes and get those reflective surfaces, or we can take advantage of some of the material nodes to get there um, real fast. I'm going to do a, a quick render just so we can see. We've already got um, some surfaces on there on, on some of this, but for the majority of the bike, we've got a default gray surface. So what I want to do is go in and quickly put on a, a nice metal surface. So I'm going to go over to the surface editor, and I'm just going to go over to, to this surface right here, open up the, the node editor, and head over to add node and use the material conductor. Conductor is a great material to work with for uh, creating photorealistic metal. All I have to do is plug from material to material. So I'm feeding that in, and that's, that material is going to override the attributes up here. Now, nothing stops me from building this from scratch, but if you're under the gun and you just have to get it done, well, you just come over here, tell it how reflective, how specular do you want it. I'll just throw 80 in there. You can already kind of see in the preview here uh, the reflection going on. And I'm going to uh, throw a little bit of roughness in there. And I'll turn this off so we don't get such a, a velvety uh, looking metal. And let's take a look at what our, our render is going to look like. Okay, So now we have uh, pretty much the, the same reflections that, and metal that we have going on here. But I want to go in and dress it up just a little bit. I'm going to get some of the two-tone that we have going on on the bike. So what I'll do is I'll load a mixer node so that we can have multiple colors. For the background color, let's just go with um, we'll just go with like a chrome blue here. And for the foreground color, I'm going to go with red. Okay, and I'm going to plug this in. But right now, the foreground color is going to be overlaying that other color, the the like the chrome blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it I only want the red in specific areas. So to do that, I'm going to take advantage of a weight map that's on there. And I'll just double click, open up the properties, and choose the main color. And I'm going to feed that into Opacity. Opacity is going to control the, um, the foreground color. And now I've got the two-tone metal set up using conductor so I can get in there, get it done nice and fast, and, uh, and get some surfaces. So what we can look at now is a few of the other materials that uh, allow you to, um, to get in there and get it done. So I'm just going to load up a, a different scene. Let's go over to this uh, Clive Barker design here. Just going to load in a reflection image. And before we start placing uh, surfaces on this, I want to frame my shot. And uh, what I can do is just uh, eyeball it, or I can take advantage of the composition overlays that have been added in 9.5. These are really handy tools. Uh, this, uh, the composition overlays have been used throughout the centuries by artists to get good composition. You have golden sections, golden triangle, harmonious triangles, rule of thirds, which is what most people are familiar with spiral sections and the golden spiral. I like using golden spiral. They're all kind of based off of that. Uh, but you have your option of, of how you'd like to work. I'm just going to use that. It, it, it places it uh, within the camera display. So what I can do is using my uh, composition overlay, I'm just going to grab my camera, kind of move it into to place. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And I just want to make sure that my focus is going to come right in here. So I'm using that overlay so that I can get a nice, uh, nice clean um, composition. This is great for artists that are, are, are familiar with it. And it's also great if you're not familiar with it to start getting good composition in your, in your work. So I'm just going to leave that there. Let's do a, a quick render. And it's kind of the render's not really fitting on this uh, display. So I'm just going to go and change it to 50% so we can fit it all here. That'll work, so I can kick that off to the side. So there's a fish bowl on this uh, this uh, character's head, and we 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 need to see what's in that fish bowl. So I need some nice photorealistic glass. 
Now, I could, again, I could go in, work with all my attributes, and work from there. But what I'd rather do, being the, uh, the lazy person that I am, I'm just going to go pick that surface, come over here to materials, and choose dielectric. Dielectric's a great material for doing glass. I'm going to pick the color of glass that I want. I'm going to use blue to kind of play off that orange that we have going on in the background. I'm going to give it some absorption so that we can have some thickness so we can start seeing the glass and the color in the glass. So we'll just try two. And for refraction index, if we want glass uh, in the real world, 1.52. But you can kind of adjust it uh, and see what you like there. So let's do a quick render. And with just a few settings on the dielectric, I now have the reflections, the specularity, the refraction. I've got all that going on. I can go and tweak those settings. And I can build uh, more attributes and, and uh, flow them right into that material node. But if I need glass and I need it fast, I just need to get the job done, I've got the, the material nodes to work with. We've got these hooks on here. Let's take advantage of that uh, conductor um, material that we worked with earlier. So I'm going to go over to materials, conductor, plug that right in. Let's uh, give it some specularity, which is going to help us with our reflection as well. And uh, let's take a look and see how this is working. So now we've got our uh, reflective metal hooks. We've got our glass. Let's take a look at uh, dressing up the skin a bit. In the note editor, we've got lots of, actually, let's go over to the skin. And in the note editor, we've got lots of great materials that, um, that can work well with uh, subsurface scattering. But I'm going to use my favorite, uh, the one that's new. And uh, we're going to use fast skin. I'm just going to plug in. Uh, my material. Let's just take a quick look at what's going on here. We've got our uh, epidermis and our subdermis. I'm going to change the distance here on my epidermis. Let's just do um, 20. And on, on, on my subdermis, I'm just going to try 15. And we've got our colors here. We can adjust them, but the default colors work pretty well for, um, for this kind of character. And uh, let's just take a look at the render. And uh, right now, you can see that it's, uh, it's doing the, the calculations on the subsurface scattering. And I've got a little bit of it going on on the nose here. Uh, it dressed up the, the top of the head and, and right here. If I threw a backlight on there, we could see it even more. Uh, but that's just a quick example of three of the materials. We've got other materials to work with. And uh, we also can build flows from scratch. If, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the ways that the, um, that the, that the node editor works, is that we can go in. And let's just uh, let's select the, uh, the brim here. And let's take a look at uh, just building a basic flow. Right now, I've got my attributes, color, luminosity, diffuse. And, and I can uh, work with those. I'm going to play with the color a little bit. So I'm going to go to 3D textures. And I have all these procedural textures that I can work with. I can also load in images and uh, normal maps and displacement maps and things like that. But I'm going to work with, uh, let's just work with turbulence. I'm going to kick it over here. And I can change the colors if I'd like. Let's do uh, blue and let's do yellow. Just something that we're going to really get to see. And I'm going to bump up the contrast so that we can really see the, the pattern going on. And I'm also going to scale this down a bit. OK. And let's see what's uh, happening with our render. OK. So now I have my uh, hats getting dressed up a little bit. But instead of just one value for that yellow, I want to have multiple values. But if we look in here, we only have the ability for one RGB value. But if we look out here, we've got our inputs for background color and foreground color. So what I'll do is just add, let's add another procedural texture. Let's use uh, crumple. And I'm going to kick that into the yellow. And now the yellow is replaced with this crumple procedural, which I can then go and uh, just dress it up with yellow. And then let's add orange in there so we can kind of blend it. Okay. So now I'm increasing the level of detail on my surface just by continuing on with that flow. And if I want, I can use the uh, same thing for bump. And I can get a bump surface going on there. And I don't have to build an entirely new flow for that.